Hi, good day to everybody. Uh, this is Mr. Orvin, uh, your IT teacher, and I'm going to teach Computing Fundamentals lesson number two, and this is all about hardware. Uh, this is part of your Module A exam for our IC3 certification exams. Okay, so last time or the last lesson we have is all about the software part of the computer, which is the system software or the operating system. Now let's discuss the hardware part. The hardware part is the physical aspect of your computer wherein that's a part of the computer that you can touch, you can feel, you can see, you can smell, or even you can taste. Uh, so of course you're not going to taste the computer, but uh, that's the technical definition. It's the physical aspect so you can use all your five senses, okay? And you can experience the hardware. Uh, unlike the software, which is the logical part, you cannot touch it, you cannot see it, and you cannot smell it. So that part is all logical. Okay, so I'm going to share to you my presentation. Okay, so this will be uploaded on your model. So you can download this also. Um, and then you can start uh, while I'm discussing, you can browse the presentation. So what are we going to discuss? The relationships among hardware devices, driver, firmware and platforms. What are this? Uh, common measurements, measurements used in computing, standard internal computer components, memory and storage, identifying different types of computers, keyboards, microphones, and touch screens, typical smartphone hardware, Windows power plants, connecting peripheral devices, wireless technologies. So let's start with the um, hardware. Uh, as you can see, the question here is what makes hardware tick? Meaning, how does a hardware function in a computer? Uh, as I've mentioned also, it's very important that you cannot divide hardware with the software. Simply because it will not run because if there are no software involved, it cannot be controlled, it cannot be managed. So the first thing that you have to know about hardware it has is that it has a device driver. A driver is a piece of software that allows computer to communicate with and control the devices connected to it. So aside from that, it has a firmware. Again, firmware is again another software, but what is this? It's already uh, pro programmed on a chip of a computer, which usually is a ROM, ROM, read-only memory, uh, or even as you're seeing right now, you have program, uh, lo you have programmable logic controller. If you're hearing those words or those terms, it's a microchip. Okay, that is already on the device, wherein there is already a um, a program. Okay, written on that chip, or we call it semiconductor or IC integrated circuit. Okay, this is already there, so that when you install the device driver on your operating system, then it can talk to each other. Okay, so that's how they will know that this is how it functions. This is where it will connect to the computer. This is how it will give data to the computer or this is how it will receive data from the computer. So this is what the firmware is. Firmware is inside the device. Device driver is going to be added or even it's already on the operating system. Now the platform uh, this is what we call the operating system, of course. It's created by hardware and oper operating system in which program runs. Um, when you create um, or when you design a hardware to be connected to a computer, if you're seeing that in like Mac version or Windows version because of that platform, okay? Uh, we, we're, we're in this is the compatibility side 
of your operating system to your device. Okay? So let's proceed. So how I mentioned earlier the data. Okay, so data that is coming from the device and going to your computer. And this will be processed by your processor. This will be stored in your um, uh, memory or storage. Okay, and that data is called a bit, a binary digit. Okay, what is a binary digit? You can see here a bit can equal to zero or one. Computers only talk or the, the language computer only knows. Okay, so we're talking about the language computer only knows. Huh? He only transmits one zero one zero in forms of an electrical energy. That's why it's run by electricity. If there is no power or electricity, it will not work. Okay, as simple as that. Okay, so with that, so for example, a letter A, a letter A has an equivalent 010001. If he wants to transmit that letter, then so I, I mentioned you, to you 01, it's not the exact uh, equivalent. I'm just giving you an example. So that 01001, for example, will be transmitted five digits, which is a binary digit. Okay, which is only one and zero. Okay, remember human being, for example, us, we have what we call the decimal number system. What is this de decimal number system? If you are familiar with zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, decimal means 10. Deci means 10. Okay, so there are 10 digits there. Zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10 digits. Okay, in the binary system, which your computer understands, it has only zero and one. Okay, two digits, zero and one. Okay, by binary, binary digit, in short, bit. Okay, now this is where our uh, storage of data is coming from. Because you have a system of zeros and ones, as your data, now you have now one byte, okay, which is equivalent to eight bits, okay? So, and one alphanumeric character requires a byte of space, so that means when I mention to you letter A, it has an equivalence of eight digits binary, eight bits, okay, which is equal to one byte. So, if you're going to transmit uh, many letters, let's say five letters, so you will need five times eight, that's gonna be 40 bits already. Okay, one byte, 40 bits. Alphanumeric means alphabet and numbers, it is composed of one byte. Okay, so you have this presentation, so one bit is a single binary digit. Okay, so this is slide, you can hover around this and it's gonna be easy it's just easy to understand one byte with the abbreviation of capital B and all of this kilobyte megabyte gigabyte terabyte petabyte okay so one byte is eight bits now one kilobyte is one thousand byte kilo means one thousand but it's not exactly one thousand you might you must understand it's one thousand zero twenty four Okay, because you are trying to add digits and digits and digits, and that digit is binary digits, which is zeros or one. Okay, so that's why it's a, an exponent of two. Okay, so you must understand that it's 1024 bytes, which is equivalent to one kilobyte. And if you're having one megabyte that's 1024 kilobytes so we're just appro approximating it to 1 million bytes so mega giga tera peta right now you can see that you have hard disk that you can buy it in one terabyte two terabytes three terabytes terabytes sorry maybe five terabytes and so on that's many 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 big big space in your storage okay remember for example if you have a high definition picture or image maybe four megabytes 
okay so that's how many megabytes we can have in one terabyte so that's too much okay we have billion of pictures okay that you can store in a one terabyte uh, space or storage capacity okay frequency is um, a measurement of the speed of your computer remember about pentium i5 i7 and so on and so forth okay now there's also amd okay who's developing before it was intel who's very famous now it's amd now this is where uh this comes on your computer so i can show you my uh let's see my computer system let's see if it will show here uh how do i do that uh, is it in the computer management no sorry so let's mm, go to control panel system okay review your computer system status sit here no 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 where is it okay system and security uh It's not here. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, system. Sorry. Okay, so for my computer is i7 7600 CPU at 2.8 gigahertz, 2.10 gigahertz. So this is where the speed of my processor, the processing capability of my computer, my laptop. So what is this? 2.8 eight gigahertz is cycles per second cycles per second it's let's say how many uh bits you're transferring in a second so that's one billion okay one billion bits per second that you are transferring for example that's 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 just an approximate okay i'm giving you just an idea uh this is my computer and if you give him a task or a process to be done, uh, he can do one billion cycles per second. Okay, per second. Huh? That's why it should be fast. Okay, now the internet, your connection to the Wi-Fi or to the network is measured by bits per second. It's how much, again, how many bits you're transferring in a second. So that's different from the hertz because the cycles per second, it's the measurement of the uh what they, what do we call this the processor speed for for the internet which you can see here internet access let's see if, if i right click open network and internet settings okay so you can see it's transferring data data usage 986 mb already let's see it here okay so this is mb let me go for the control panel wherein i can show you maybe control system network and view network status and task yeah here okay so you can see here how many bytes being sent and received what's the speed it's 144.4 megabits per second that's how many bits per second that we're transferring right now now the speed of this is for the wi-fi which is the wireless network that i'm connecting right now but okay your internet connection is different your internet connection is connecting to the internet so you have to know that from your service provider which is your uh or mantel or oridu okay al uh, as i mentioned uh you can you you can know your internet connections speed let me just go back here uh 
um, your ISP internet service providers as your Omantel, uh, Oridu, or Alawasa. Okay, so that's about the measuring or measurement of bandwidth. Again, it depends. Uh, it's not always 144.4 Mbps. It is just because I'm using a Wi-Fi connection to connect to the internet. Uh, the device that we, the Omantel gave you, okay, that's 144.4 Mbps. If you use a wire or a cable, it's going to be at least 1 Gbps. That's the max maximum speed it can handle. It doesn't mean that that's really your speed connecting to the Wi-Fi or connecting to the network. Uh, and then again, that from your house, for example, to the outside world, that's again another discussion if it will be the same. It has different factors uh, that will affect the speed. Okay, not only that. Okay, so let's uh, close this control panel first. Let me go back to this. Okay, next topic. The basics. What's inside our computer? You have a system board, processors, input devices, output devices, storage devices, and power supply. Okay, so I, uh, I, I'm going to assume that you're going to uh, search for this. If you already forgot this, you can use the ebook. System system board is a big board wherein all this interconnection of the devices inside. Okay, so we can Google this for the images. Uh, motherboard or system board. Yeah, okay, so that's how it looks like. So all the components, the uh, RAM is going to be connected there, the power power supply it has to have a power supply the processor that which you're going you're seeing right now here this is our system board the processor i just mentioned okay input devices and output devices so these are um what they call this input devices are your keyboard and your mouse it gives data for example i put press A, it gives data to your processor to process. Output devices is where it's going to give you the result, like after processing whatever, I type A, where will I see A? Of course, from the monitor. Uh, storage devices are your memory, your RAM, okay, your hard disk, and so on. Of course, power supply is very important. It converts your power outlet, which is 240 AC, to a DC power supply that is needed by your laptop and your um, or your desktop. Okay, so that's going to be DC. What's DC? Direct current, alternating current. Okay. Now, the most important, not most important, it's that depends the speed, uh, the, the, the memory and storage that where your computer speed depends on aside from your processor is your RAM, random access memory, because it will contain the files that you're opening during the booting period. When you uh, turn on your computer or when you open an application, these are where the files being stored. If your RAM is small, then it will take time, meaning uh, it's like you're entering uh okay a small uh room where there are a lot of people there you have to wait outside before you can enter and use that room so it's the same as your ram if it is small then the application when you open it it will still wait because it's full okay so if it has to be big uh, to accommodate all the open applications all the file that is needed by the operating system and so on okay so what does it look like so we have to show maybe you already forgot or maybe it's the first time okay this is uh, you have a ram car random access memory Okay, this is how RAM looks like, simple chip, okay, but let's go back to the motherboard, 
Okay, this is where it will be inserted. Okay, in this white uh, for the old one. I think even for the new motherboard or computers, it's still the same. You're going to insert that here. It's just different color right now. Okay. Uh, storage devices. So for programs and user files must be stored on a computer when they are not in use. So local storage. Uh, of course, you have your hard disk. Remote storage are locations access over a network connection like your uh, network server. So uh, storage server. So we have that not on your computer, but we have that on the server room from the IT department. So something like this. This is called remote. Uh, you do not have to save it here. Uh, there's also the cloud, of course. You, we're going to discuss that later on. But if I'm going to go for a file explorer that I have right now, you're seeing that this is like our X drive and this is our Y drive. So we can save that. Uh, as a staff, I can save something in here and I can, uh, it's not on my computer, but on another hard disk. It's called local storage. So it's still, it's a hard disk, okay? It can be measured in bytes, gigabytes, terabytes, petabytes, and so on. Okay, common storage devices include the hard disk, the flash drives, the secure SD cards for mostly cameras, your, uh, some of your phones, you're, gonna, you, you're using those SD cards, and of course, optical disk and drive. So you have the CDs, the DVDs, and so on. Uh, right now, of course, CDs and DVDs are out of the way or not being used as much as it was used. Uh, how many years? Eight years ago? Ten years ago? Okay. Of course, flash drives still, the USB drive still is being used now. It's because it's handy. It's very small. Okay, but optical disc uh, and uh, optical drives, uh, DVD, now it's dying down because it needs a special device. Unlike using a flash drive, a USB drive, it's universal. Any, any computer has a USB. Okay, identifying types of computers. Let's proceed. Computers come in a wide variety of forms. Let me just okay, go back here. Computers come in a wide variety of forms and types, including servers, desktop computers, laptop computers, Chromebooks. Google has uh, its own Google notebook or laptop. Tablets, smartphones. Some types of computers are better suited to certain tasks than others. Of course, for example, you're going to choose desktop and laptop or tablet. So what are you going to use? Uh, well, you can, you can discuss that later on. We will see. I'm going to give you some advantage. Of course, a server, that's not your choice. A company has to have a server. It is giving services to other local computers. So for for example, you are in a computer laboratory. So, of course, those computer labs, uh, computer labs have computers that needs a server services of the server. Example, email server services, uh, internet services. So, those needs a server. Okay? So, a server is a little bit bigger computer. If not, the motherboard and the processors are different. Okay, it's a bigger one. It's faster. It must be bigger in uh, capacity and faster. Okay, desktop, of course, with this. In computer labs, you need desk desktop. It, uh, laptop is not uh, suitable for a computer lab. Number one is the physical security. Of course, if you put a laptop there, it's going to be easier for, uh, for the thieves okay to to get those laptops okay so those are the advantages uh and it's faster okay and it's cheaper cheaper and faster so if you're setting up uh networks okay it is cheaper if you're going to buy desktop for each of your staff okay uh, i'm not sure about mac book uh, mac pro or mac desktop uh, I'm not sure. Okay, maybe it's 
more expensive than a MacBook. Okay, but you will know that, uh, not me. Okay, so let's proceed. It's comfortable and faster to use uh, mostly for the graphical side. Uh, because of the monitor, you can buy uh, another monitor easily. Okay, now you have a computer, for example, you can have a bigger monitor easily. So something like this. Uh, what else are the advantage of a desktop? Uh, yeah, the processing, okay, uh, if you're on a multimedia type of profession or you're a gamer, most likely you, they will use desktop than that laptop, okay, because of course if you have a laptop or a notebook or a MacBook, uh, the most, uh, uh, the, the, the advantage, Okay, the best advantage is it is mobile. Okay, portable, you can carry anywhere. Uh, you can sit anywhere and use your laptop. Okay, so for me, for example, as for my profession, I prefer notebook than desktop. Okay, because I can work anywhere. I can bring my laptop and work uh, wherever I want. Okay, so of course, there is a Chromebook specialized laptop to have Google Chrome as your operating system. Uh, less expensive, lightweight, uh, but I think it's just because IC3 has a partnership with Google, so let's proceed. Okay, tablets or iPad, iPad. Okay, usually run a mobile operating system, feature a home screen, uh, of course, touch screen, High resolution touch screens and good sound quality, but um, if you're going to type, for example, uh, 5,000 to 10,000 words document, or you need an Excel application, so you still need a, a keyboard, an external keyboard. Okay, so it's not that uh, easy for you. So. Uh, yes, you can choose tablet, but maybe if you are, you know, that's why it's good in, in like in the serve, uh, serving in a restaurant. You can see that they have to have a menu on a tablet. It's easier for that uh, because it's handy. You can bring it there. It's connected to a Wi-Fi. Uh, what else? A good application is that reading books. If you're trying to just read. Uh, then tablets, iPad is good. Watching, okay, maybe movies, but not that much, okay. Uh, it's a small screen, so it's it. But if you're in a, a profession, okay, maybe it's not that of a use. You, it, you can, you can. I mean, it's uh, it depends. Maybe outside, it's more handy, of course. You can put it in a small bag, and you have it already. And like laptop, it's heavier than a tablet. So anyway, you're seeing the point. And of course you have your smartphone, okay? So smartphone is of course very handy, very uh, mobile, portable and so on. But of course the capability, the capacity of this is to store data, it's not to process and so on is still small, okay? A very uh, small processing capability. Okay, keyboards, mice, and touch screens. So I don't want to hang on this. Now let's go to a typical smartphone hardware. Uh, you can see the different, um, you know, terms that maybe you know already that it's there, but you don't know what's called like. Okay, uh, home finger scanner, most likely. What? else is not here before. Rare camera, heart rate sensor, okay, SIM tray, SIM, your uh, identification module. Okay, typical smartphone hardware has a virtual keyboard, okay, virtual on-screen keyboards, this is how it looks like, of course. Now let's go to a laptop power plant. We discussed that in the software um, part of your or the operating system, how to change the power plant. Of course, 
you have your sleep there and your hibernate and this is where a sleep can be controlled or managed you can turn off the display after two minutes on battery you can change that uh, for me i'm putting the computer to sleep never if i'm on uh, i'm plugged in always okay uh, but this i i will i'm adjusting this okay when i'm on battery Okay, the, when you are in a very low charge already, like say 20-30%, adjust the brightness. It's the, the light of your computer or laptop is the culprit, okay, in consuming energy. Okay, now connect, connecting peripherals. What, is, what are peripherals? Additional devices to your laptop, desktop, or so on. It has some connection of course you have the usb uh, wherein you can connect it's a port when you say port that's where the holes okay of course the holes on your laptop okay so this is my laptop usb is an example because the uh what do you call this the holes okay this is where or the port anyway uh usb universal serial bus Okay, a lot of things you can um, connect that. But aside from that, there are still some more um, special ports. Okay, the video ports, the network ports, the audio ports. Audio is for, of course, headphones and your microphones. The video is, let's say you have an external, okay, external monitor. You want to connect your laptop to another monitor or your desktop. Uh, then you have another video ports there. You have HDMI, of course, and the network ports, of course. Um, Wi-Fi, you don't need a port. Of course, it's wireless. But if you are, you want the speed, uh, you have a more stable connection, then you can use a wired or a cable for network. Okay, now, for example, I connected a monitor. I can use my software to duplicate displays extend this displays and so on you can use this if you connect a projector for example or another big tv on your laptop okay so multiple uh, multiple displays can be done in uh, uh, when you connect another peripheral or a monitor for example on my laptop i can have my laptop i can have another monitor so you can either duplicate this displays it's Oh, uh, the one we're using, if we're projecting using a, an LCD projector, okay? Uh, I can use extend displays. For example, I have a laptop, which is where I'm working, and then I need another monitor. So I can have, uh, what do you call this, another application open in that monitor, okay? Or show only on one, show only on two, and you can do that using uh, the settings, okay? You can go to your system settings and go to display. Uh, this is how USB ports and connectors look like. Printers, okay? Printers connects to USBs. Okay, before we have a printer port, printer cable, but that's done, okay? They already adjusted the printers to USBs. Okay, and then lastly, wireless connection, you can either use a Bluetooth or an infrared, okay? Or a Wi-Fi, the Wi-Fi itself, but that's another story so if you just need to like you're having your mobile phone you want to transfer uh pictures then you just use bluetooth it's the easiest okay now i've finished this lesson number two um we're going to answer the question and answer uh, after this these are what we discuss relationship among hardware devices, drivers, firmwares, and platforms, common measurements using used in computing, standard internal computer components, memory and storage, identifying different types of computers, keyboards, microphones, and touch screens, typical smartphone hardware, Windows power plants, connecting peripheral devices, and wireless connection technologies. So I will discuss uh, the question and answer with you. Just hang on there. See you. Peace.